You know, after it took about 37 hours to export the utility carol on my single core processor having computer, I think the greatest lesson I learned was all the ways you can cheat making a movie. Because I've done probably every single one of them in the making of the utility carol. So if you're a film student or anything like that, uh, keep your eyes out. Oh. Hi, I'm Dole Blue Spa. And I'm Sean McGeehee, director and star. Co-respectively. Yes. So here we are, watching the beginning of The Utility Carol. There goes my name. A project intended from the very beginning, or halfway through, to be the magnum opus. Uh, yeah. Definitely not from the start. This shoot originally had uh, been done before by someone else with a Ronin. And it took like uh, two hours with these guys that I barely knew. It was honestly pretty awkward. You can actually see the hidden cut there with Jack Collier in the fridge. After two hours of shooting, turns out that uh, they filmed the whole thing in 1080p. <laughs> so I had to, to rent the equipment myself, and it was a complete mess to use. Now, how many times did we do this take? Only like three, maybe? This was the only time we probably did something uh, in minimal takes here. It was only two. Uh, we had a gag where more water gets into his face when he says, uh, Bah humbug. <laughs> and I tried for uh, about an hour to put it in but couldn't work. This particular shot took 25 takes. Oh yeah. I think it's, that, that holds the, the second record. Febreze for Man had a 51 take shot. Oh, uh, talking about the pizza. Yeah. Okay, so the story about the pizza is I actually burnt it on accident because I left the pizza oven on when I was prepping for a shoot and I went to buy pizza rolls. <laughs> My wife, she did not know that uh, I was cooking pizza. Uh, she didn't know my plan was to burn it. So I get a phone call from her while at the restaurant, and uh, she says, why do you have a pizza in the oven for God knows how many minutes? Yeah. That vomits clam chowder. And, uh, and pizza rolls. There's a whole pizza roll that comes out of my mouth. Yeah. This whole film, I've been a huge fucking hypocrite. And let's see. So yeah. do you remember doing this shoot yourself? Um. Yeah, yeah, I remember this. And I think that one only had two takes. Yeah, and that hat is probably the biggest concern through the whole film, is how easily it falls off one's head. Mm -hmm. This shot, running with that hat on, there's nothing holding that hat on but, but my balance. Yeah, some people might think that you can be a perfectionist doing 20 takes, but that's not the case here. So this this shot was definitely by far, like that, <laughs> that teleportation was probably the hardest thing in the film to do because it was the first effect I tackled and... <laughs> Is really an issue of uh, trying to figure out how to do what was in my head because there was never a time where I would say I want to do it like it is in my head I would just do what I could but so that teleportation probably took uh, whew, mm -hmm. it took two weeks it took yeah. two weeks to do that I had no idea you were gonna do it with like the poppers like that mm -hmm. okay and the static here is from an actual VHS tape playing on my TV at home and I recorded the screen with my Sony A7S. Yeah, and I actually redid the entire first scene uh, in one take, and then we just reversed it. You were really pissed off at me for telling <laughs> Making, you to do that, too. Yeah, yeah. Because you didn't know exactly how I was going to edit it. No. I really needed that whole scene. And this actually broke my furnace twice. Uh, that actually will break your furnace if you do that, where you press the buttons that yeah. consistently. Anyways, I got those uh, tapes that I used for the uh, effect that you're also going to see here when Andrew swears. When uh, I was going on a road trip through the Cascades and I stopped in this really small town uh, in the middle of the mountains, probably a population of 300. And I stopped at a thrift shop and I saw a sign that said, free videotapes. So I grabbed a few mm -hmm. of films I, I would like to see. One was Caddyshack, one was Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom and they were all so fucked up. And instead of throwing them away, I decided to film that analog effect. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, I, I, it, it's been really helpful. I, I used it in a different video as well. Hmm? Yeah, and Melvin. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's, uh, it's just general. I recorded like eight minutes. Uh, and let's see. I think me dancing was my favorite part I ever filmed in this. Yes. That was a lot of fun. This movie had approximately uh, a dozen shoots done for it. Yeah. And that's not counting the additional shoots we had to do. We did several reshoots, and each shoot had a completely different attitude about it. Yeah. Because... <laughs> I love my stare there. That's a really good edit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, that, that all started as a joke. That conversation between Andrew and Sean that just transpired was supposed to only be uh, 15 seconds. 
Mm -hmm. There were like three lines of dialogue, but because Andrew and Sean had such good chemistry and Andrew wasn't really feeling it, mm -hmm. I did what I always do with Andrew. I tell him, do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. And I edited around that first as a joke, but then mm -hmm. we kept that cut. And uh, yeah, I wrote all these little notes too. Uh, he told me, I, I don't know if he's still happy that I wrote like fake stuff on there, like mm -hmm. six nickels per hour. <laughs> yes. The film was originally <laughs> supposed to be a straight PSA that used actual facts, but then that sort of mellowed out. I decided that that would get in the way of the entertainment of the film. If we Occasionally I would use actual facts, but uh, the further along we got, the more liberties mm. we took. Yeah, I think Quentin speaks facts. Mm. Like that. Yeah. That, that shot was surprisingly easy to do right here, uh, because I did it in an animation program and I just mapped the corners to the piece of paper because uh -huh. it's a square object. Yeah. Uh, I was really afraid going in how hard that was going to be. I'm surprised you got Quentin to look so good with the effects. Yeah, Quentin here, I, I went into the school studio to do green screening. And uh, while we were recording the green screening, uh, we found out that the fireman suit that I got from Goodwill for only $20 did not fit him. We decided to have him wear a wife beater underneath it, give him this real blue collar vibe to him, like a plumber, you know? It's like a plumber's crack, except for the front. Yeah. And I like how his reveal is just his, his ass. Mm -hmm. I really like that shot. That's yeah. a good picture. I think the most uh, Sean and I ever laughed working on this film was recording the grass's voices. Mm -hmm. This right here was a happy accident. I was not satisfied with the transition that I originally had planned, which was just going to be a close-up on his eyes and a jump cut to pure black. And after the film came out, everybody mm -hmm. tells me the eye sequence is their favorite. The teleportation really? effect that mm -hmm. fucking took two weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, the ghost effects from Quentin that took one and a half weeks. The eye effect, which I did in one day, yeah. just seemed to work because that just came to me. That was the one thing that it's, I didn't really plan for in terms of effects. It's very absurd and avant-garde in a way. This whole scene, this whole sequence too. Mm -hmm. I really like, I've said this before, I like what you did with like the purples in the dark. Because uh -huh. that, that was not there filming. Uh -huh. This is all post-coloring. Yeah. I was always trying to completely fuck with the colors yeah and, no you, you, you can tell. and i could i could really go crazy here because most of the screen is black and it's fog it's very monotonous so i can really bring out colors mm -hmm. this was just filmed in our backyard uh in my backyard at at night yeah and uh we just used a fog machine you're gonna see uh jack in a second that was filmed in a small room in my garage and the reason it's pure white in there, he was actually in a really small room that was probably mm -hmm. six by six feet with shelves and shit everywhere, but we made the fog so thick that, uh... It looks like it's just see across see. from me, right? See this one here, yeah. Yeah. A, a good two feet behind him is clutter out the ass, and he could just disappear in one feet. <laughs> mm -hmm. One foot, that is. I added that evicted text just because that shot was out of focus, and I uh, wanted to do something fancy so nobody would really notice. I had wondered. We did... I did nothing but cheat on this film. I cheated all the angles, I cheated the continuity, like here he, like Sean's filmed in the backyard, Jack's filmed in a garage. Yeah. The lighting itself is completely different and this is acceptable, this is the most drawing it is. Jack Collier, the guy who plays the ghost of utilities yet to come, he, w he would bring that into class and play it and one girl actually vomited because she was so scared and shocked. From the death whistle? From the death whistle. Yeah. She got a migraine and she vomited. Really? She had to leave class. Th this is ominous. Like, the way we film this and the lighting and everything, it just looks really mm -hmm. almost, I would say almost like a David Lynch moment here. Hey, yep. One day my dad, uh, a cop died, and my dad uh, replaced the porch light with blue light. Mm -hmm. That was probably five years ago, and we still, we never took it off. I mean, it just looks nicer. Happy accident. Yeah. We, I would not have thought of that, to be honest. I, I might have done colorization in post, mm -hmm. but that was a blue light. And uh, Jack, he was filmed in my backyard uh, in Ellensburg. The rest of the scene yeah. filmed at my family's house. Yeah, he's not there next to me, but he is in editing. Yeah, Ellensburg and Puyallup. Yeah. Two cities 100 miles apart. Uh, Man, your mom really killed it <laughs> with the acting here. For 10 years, I've never had my mom in a film, and this mm -hmm. was the first one. Mm -hmm. And she just broke out i think she definitely commanded like her role because from real life experience yeah yeah because all two of her sons are now 
in college, and the third child, the daughter, is about to leave, and she's going through the phase where she hates everyone. Mm. So she's really desperate, and I told my dad to just call me a failure, <laughs> but point at Sean. He's a failure. <laughs> You're a failure. Yeah. Mm, uh. and that's so your accent I had to, we never really knew what was the right point uh -huh. to have you speak in a normal accent what speak full, with a fake accent or full blown Scrooge yeah I thought that would have been an, an issue well I think it keeps with the kind of humor of this video is it's so like you don't know what's gonna happen next I mean you know the story of the Christmas like uh, Carol Carol yeah mm -hmm. uh, but besides that it definitely breaks from the, the boundary. Precisely. And it ended up sort of working funny, and there's, like, like again, a lot of fucking, a lot of cheating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, but we got away with it simply because it's just so hackneyed, but I really wanted to make sure that it wasn't too obscure. Of course, I'm mm -hmm. saying that while this happens, I but... I did not think you would use this in the mm -hmm. final cut. <laughs> and as for Benley recording in slow motion, I had him chase me for, like, uh, an hour both of us. In the middle of the night, it was midnight. Yeah. And had to just have the camera behind me. <laughs> That's Sean actually snoring. <laughs> no. <laughs> one day, one night you were sleeping uh, when I wanted to start a shoot and everybody was late and you were still asleep and it. Yeah. I decided to be a little bitch about it and I recorded you snore. Mm -hmm. Then I played mm -hmm. it back on the computer at maximum volume to wake you up with your own snoring. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and here's the best credit sequence he's ever made. Oh yeah, it's, it's, that's my main concern whenever I start a new film now is because I went from Febreze Man to Waterman and now to this, whatever makes next has to literally give people seizures <laughs> in order for me to I don't know if that's continue the upwards trend. Yeah, I don't know if that's upwards or downwards, yeah, depending. Yeah. Also, so why'd you pick the font colors? The colors? The uh, orange and the green, it's very off-putting. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I wanted to make uh, the, uh, again, the, uh, the Dolby Spa film, mm -hmm. and I focused the color scheme to be my favorite colors that I use the most, which is a deep blue, a, uh, a cyan slash turquoise color, mm -hmm. and orange. Yeah. 255 red, 140 <laughs> uh, green, 40 blue. That's a fun fact. So, it's, uh, it's all over now. I think uh, we decided to make a new best film. This was our first major collaboration, yeah. and I think it worked out really well. We were on, that we were sadly often at odds with each other, uh, <laughs> mainly because we were big personalities in the and the shoots. Mm -hmm. Some shoots would have seven people, and they would take twelve hours, and it would be grueling, and people would be very low energy. And other times it would be just you and me, or you, me, and one third person. And it would only be for 90 minutes in between classes, and everything would take three takes or less. This was a very, this was easily the most flexible shooting schedule I've ever committed to on a film. And uh, you were saying earlier, I lost a lot of weight like during the, the shoot, and then when we had to do reshoots even later, like nine months after the fact, I was a different looking person completely. Yep. Over the course of the film, the trees leaves. Yeah. Grew back the yeah. one you see in the backyard, <laughs> and then they fell off. Died again. again. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Any last closing comments? I want to make a longer film so that yeah. we can get it all out. Uh -huh. Hopefully the timeline really gave way to uh, bigger insight. Just ask questions if you got them. This was a really great first collaboration because you're probably the first guy I met that, uh, that has made as many videos in a similar style. And uh -huh. you can easily make better videos than me. So we're always <laughs> on our toes now. That's the thing. We have... Because yeah. we never met equals before. Trying to one-up each other each time, yeah. Yeah. The Utility Carol, the reason it became so crazy mm -hmm. is because of... Uh, Stu's News? Because of Stu's News. Yeah. Uh, Milton. Yeah. That was really good. And I fucking... I turned green watching it. And I was thinking... <laughs> I was I had just started The Utility Carol. And I was like, yeah. the, utility, the Utility Carol needs to be crazy mm -hmm. it needs to be a one-up so let's see what you do and i don't think it matters who ones up the other because we're just at be this point we're working together yeah precisely so all right let's hope uh this doesn't turn into some sort of weird breakup and we look back at this commentary and die yeah mm. yeah all right <laughs> bye goodbye
do 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 do